Okay, so welcome back. In the next example, we'll learn something slightly new. Namely, I want to also practice a bit working not only with the results, but with the methods we had in the previous sections. So we're doing this by deriving a new result, namely how to get the confidence interval for the model mean. So that's just the x beta. And well, we use the same method, so we need to just copy what we did for deriving a confidence interval for the betas. And we will see, it's quite easy. So let's see what we can do. So to see what I mean by confidence interval for the model mean, let us just remember what's the model. The model was y is x beta plus epsilon. And epsilon was normal distributed with mean zero and some covariance matrix. And this thing here is deterministic. And so far we have learned how to do confidence intervals for the beta, and now I want to do confidence intervals for the x beta. And what I actually want to do is I want to plug in a new x value. So that is the model means for all y values at once. And instead I want to say I have new values x1 up to xp. And I want to take the model mean corresponding to that. So what I do is I define x twiddle to be the vector of these values plus a one for the intercept. So one x1 up to xp. So that's a vector in r p plus one. And then to get the model mean corresponding to this x, we need to treat this like we treat the rows in that x. So the rows are flipped over vectors and multiplied to the beta. So the model mean is then x to the transpose beta. And our estimate for the model mean, you can guess, is x to the transpose beta hat, since beta hat is the estimate for beta. Good, so that's both numbers. And my aim is get the confidence interval for this one. So, and what I'll do is I will copy what we did when we learned about confidence intervals for the beta i only replacing beta i with this new quantity, but I'll follow the same strategy. So we will show something involving that quantity is t distributed, and we need to somehow express it as a function of the estimate, and then we follow the same steps to get an interval centered at the estimate. So I would strongly recommend before you read what I've written and watch this video, maybe have a break here, go back to section 5.2, I think it was, and see whether you can do it yourself. I think that would be an excellent exercise. I'll wait for you to come back. Great, so welcome back. Let's see whether I get the same result as you did. So what do we need to do? We need to somehow find a test statistic. And that thing I call already t, well, let's call it t twiddle. That will be some rescaled version of x twiddle transpose beta hat minus x twiddle transpose beta. And we can already guess, probably we need to divide by sigma hat squared here, which is square root, but we will need to add more terms in there that the scaling is right. And what we need to do with the scaling is we need to make that standard normal distributed, and down here we need a chi-square distribution divided by the number of degrees of freedom. And actually down there we already know what to do, but let's not worry straight away. So numerator, we know beta hat is normally distributed with mean beta and covariance matrix sigma squared x transpose x inverse. And we know how normal distributions transform under linear mapping. So if I multiply matrix from the left, and if I multiply this one times p plus one matrix x twiddle transpose, a row vector, then what we get is the mean is just multiplied with the thing. So x twiddle transpose beta is what we get. And the covariance matrix has x twiddle transpose from the left. Then I copy the covariance matrix. And then it also has x twiddle from the right. That was the rule. What happens to a normal distribution if I multiply the random vector from the left with the matrix? And now up here we have already the distance between beta hat and beta. So that's quite convenient because down here you see x to the twiddle beta hat minus x to the transpose beta is then normally distributed with mean zero and the same variance. That's now one by one matrix, so a number. And you can see what we need to divide by. If we divide 
by square root of x triple t sigma squared, x transpose x inverse x triple, then that will turn out to be standard normal distribute. So that's what we'll try for the numerator. I just copy that. And the denominator is that we already know, so let's just recall that. So if we have 1 over sigma squared n minus p minus 1 sigma hat squared divided by n minus p minus 1, then that comes out right, because then that one here is chi squared distributed with n minus p minus 1 degrees of freedom, and we divide by the degrees, so that's all okay for a t distribution. And then the last step is also like we have seen it before, namely we need to argue numerator and denominator are independent, but that is clear because beta hat and sigma hat squared are independent, and that is just a function of beta hat in the numerator and a function of sigma hat squared in the denominator. And now the only thing left to do is to make sure that we can compute that without knowing sigma squared. And you can already see this, that works nicely, namely this here and that here cancels, so we can simplify that a bit for tidiness. So what we get, if we do it all in the simplest form, we can cancel the n minus p minus 1 and the n minus p minus 1 in front of the sigma head squared again for computing it, we needed that only for the argument. So what we can use is x twitter transpose beta hat minus x twitter transpose beta divided by square root sigma hat squared, x triple transpose, x transpose, x inverse, x triple. And that's how we are going to actually compute it. Good, and now the final step is, how do we get a confidence interval from that? And that's easy, namely, so that thing here now we know is t distributed with n minus p minus 1 degrees of freedom. So let t be the 1 minus alpha over 2 quantile of this distribution. And then we know probability of modulus t twiddle less than or equal to t is 1 minus alpha, so that means that happens with high probability. And now we need to just solve this equation for x twiddle transpose beta, because that's the quantity we want. So we have that. And then t less than or equal to t if and only if x twiddle transpose beta hat minus x twiddle transpose b modulus is less than or equal c square root times t. And that's the case if and only if x twiddle transpose beta, that's the quantity we are interested in, is in x twiddle transpose beta hat. That's our estimate minus square root times t and x triple transpose beta hat plus square root times t. And that's really it. So we have solved this problem. And in the notes, I give you a numerical example using R. But here, I just leave it at this, because really my aim was to derive a formula for a new confidence interval we haven't done before. Good, so that concludes our second example.